MovieWeb.com. Who put these things under the floorboards? What is it? It's one bright day in the middle of the night. Two dead boys got up to fight. The policeman heard the noise and he came and he killed those two dead boys. You're scaring me. We'll join the club. Wendy! God, what have you done to yourself? Well, the first thing I want to talk to you about is this poster with this ectoplasmic, like, stuff coming out of this kid's face. Now, this was based on a real scientific military experiment that they did back in the 40s. Is that correct? Back in the uh, late 20s, early 30s, there's this phenomenon of seances and mediums, and there was a series of photographs came out where, uh, like that thing, the Hamilton Collection, where these mediums uh, appeared to have this bizarre substance coming out of them uh, during their, their seances. And the freakiest of these were the ones with this sort of meaty substance coming out of, of people. And there was this whole like debate between uh, Arthur Conan Doyle and Houdini about uh, you know the, the truth behind all this. And I think it was just partly because of all the people that died in World War I, um, there was a huge collective grieving for um, the lost, you know, youth of the generation, and I think that people just really willed this into into being that they, they could talk to the dead. Well, how did that? Does that account for the pictures that people saw of this stuff coming out? Um, well, it was the early days of photography, and. Um, uh, I think, um, yeah, some of the photos are obviously uh, pretty crude, just double exposures, and people didn't really use the cameras and stuff back then. <laughs> they oh, wow. Um, but uh, so some of them, this, the, you know, the, the, the photos just look really freaky. Well, have you looked into what the digital software does now as far as capturing spirits? I mean, was that something you kind of studied before making a movie that's is? I, I'm not, I haven't seen the film, so is this set in contemporary times? Yeah, but there's uh, the backstory of the film happened back at that time, and um, yeah, the people in the house conducted these uh, seances. I want to talk about the about 99% of the films that have come out in the last 10 years all focus, especially like in talking about advertisements with women and girls. And what's striking about the poster for this film is that it's a boy on this poster. And I'm wondering, how did you decide to flip the genre and sort of bring it back to where we're seeing a male protagonist, and at least as far as the advertisements are concerned? Well, the guy on the poster isn't actually the protagonist, but um, the yeah, the main guy is um, is played by Kyle Dorner. He's just an awesome actor. Um, well, it's based on the, the real story, and the real character was a guy. So, uh, and I just thought it was a great story. I think uh, he's pretty sick in the film. So, I think one of the reasons for having a female protagonist is that they appear to be more kind of vulnerable, uh, and the fact that. Uh, the character is kind of sick and vulnerable already. That's one of the reasons you can see the ghost is because he's close to death. But what, what kind of makes him, uh, that kind of sounds like a downer, but he actually has such a positive attitude. He's, you know, I think it's really appealing to the fact that he's still so, um, so positive, has such a positive attitude in the face of, of death. You know, he still keeps a bright face on. And uh, I think that's, you know, an endearing characteristic is someone that's in a bad way and doesn't feel at all. Um, really sorry for themselves. Now, I had never heard about the real story that this is based on before I started looking into your film, and I'm wondering, how did you come to find out about this story, and can you kind of talk a little bit about the story itself? Well, I, uh, I've been, I made this short film with the team that had done really well, and I was, I met a lot of producers, and I knew the guys at Gold Circle, and they showed me the script, and uh, I just thought it was a really good story. They had been working on it for a couple of years and it was based on this documentary on the Discovery Channel, uh, A Haunting in Connecticut. And uh, that's sort of where I came into it and, and I just thought it was a, it was a ripping yarn and uh, you know, we took it from there. And did you go to the actual locations where this was said to happen to kind of study that before you started filming? No, 
No. The actual house is kind of a really kind of boxy design as well, and we thought visually it wouldn't be that interesting, so we, you know, got a more interesting looking house as well. Plus, um, I kind of didn't want people turning up at the house and harassing whoever lives in the house now. <laughs> Well, is the house no longer a funeral home? The real house? Oh, yeah, people live there. And, yeah, apparently the yeah, people, sightseers have been going around and hanging around this house, which is kind of what I was hoping wouldn't happen. <laughs> now, um, I don't know if you've watched a lot of the ghost movies that have come out in the last couple of years, but for me, everyone I see, the ending is sort of a letdown from the buildup of the entire thing and from what I heard you're you have a pretty good ending here and I'm just wondering I know you don't want to give anything away about the movie but can you sort of talk about how you go through and set up the film and come to a point where you actually have a really good ending that pays off for the audience well I guess for these kind of films it's about if there's a guy with a knife around the corner it's the fear of something you know about so it's more like straight suspense film like this, what you're scared about is what you don't really know, it's the un, it's fear of the unknown. And so a lot of times in these kind of movies, as you get deeper into the film, the unknown becomes more known and so the ending can be less satisfying because by that time you kind of know everything. Um, but what's great about, what attracted me to this film, one of the things is that the, there's layers to the mystery and it uh, you get, as you start to know stuff, it raises more questions, and so I think we keep it pretty. Um, that we keep it mysterious and creepy right up to, towards the end. And I just think it's a it's an emotionally satisfying ending, which uh, yeah, it's pretty rare. But mostly in the sort of haunted house film, they just get out of the house at the end. They finally <laughs> decide let's get out. This has something a little different and a bit more to, from my way of seeing it. Connecticut, rated PG-13, in theaters everywhere, March 27th.